Claude Anderson, who's been studying reparations for 50 years. You know, you, you do know, I mean, someone maybe needs to go and tell, you know, the administration, hey, there's this book that, that millions of people love called Powernomics. Uh, it was called the Bible for the Economic Bible for Black People back when it was written in the early 90s. Uh, when Ice Cube called me, he wanted to talk to Dr. Claude Anderson because he'd read Powernomics and was so blown away by it. Charlemagne knows about Powernomics. He and Tiffany Haddish got on a jet and flew to Dr. Claude Anderson's house just so they can sit with this brilliant man. When Kanye West called me, first thing he said is, uh, how's Dr. Anderson doing? His book, Powernomics, is amazing. Right? He said, I took it over to, he, he now, now Kanye is a Trump guy, and he took it over to the Trump people, and he had the Trump people reading Powernomics. Uh, but also, there are people on the left who've been introduced to Powernomics. Charlemagne's more of a Kamala guy. He understands her. So, so, and, and all, most of you, many of you have heard about Powernomics. So, so one of the things that I think contributes to the idea that politicians are just out of touch with Black people and Black men in particular, but really Black families, Black families that are on the ground doing the work, is that there's something that's as phenomenal as this, this, this massive amount of study and work that's been done in the area of reparations. And then they just act like, oh, it hasn't been done yet. It hasn't been studied. No, the studies have been done. And uh, in fact, actually, let me uh, tell you all. So so if, if you want to find a book that will help familiarize you on why we're owed about 15, 14 to 15 trillion dollars in reparations, uh, Dr. Anderson's two most popular books are uh, Black Labor, White Wealth. That was the first book I ever read of his. And that really blew me away. And then Powernomics is the most popular. And uh, you can go to Powernomics.com if you want to go take a look at his books. I think they should all be required reading for anybody in our community that, that cares. All right. So here's um, I'm going to read a little bit from Black. Black labor, white wealth. And uh, this is just one of many, 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 many reasons why wealth is owed to African-Americans. Uh, one of the greatest wealth builders in America is land. And there was something, how many of you heard of the 1862 Homestead Act? Have you heard of the Homestead, Homestead Act? Give me a yes if you heard about the Homestead Act or what it was to be a homesteader. Okay, so the Homestead Act of 18, 1862 represented America's last great land policy. It was enacted on the eve of the Civil War and provided that anyone living on land for five years while making some improvements could acquire a free title to 160 acres. This act remained in effect until 1900 and provided 400,000 to 600,000 white families with homes and farms. Now, mind you, some of this property now is worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. So 400 to 600,000 white families were able to get 160 acres. I mean, imagine that for a minute. You know, this is financial consciousness training. I want you to take a moment and meditate and imagine if your family owned 160 acres of land. Like, think, think about how big that is. You know, just five acres is pretty massive. Imagine if you owned 160 acres. Imagine if all of us, think about, think about this. Imagine if all of us, right now, every one of us, own own 160 acres of land. Uh, all every one of us would be millionaires. All of us would have uh, an insane amount of wealth. We'd be able to borrow against that land. We'd be able to go. You wouldn't have to work for anybody if you were responsible with that wealth and protected it. 160 acres is a lot of land. So he says here, of all the public land that this act passed into private hands, not more than 11 to 17 percent was settled by homesteaders. By 1900, most of the land had gone to speculators who thus acquired the claims to rich Western lands, timber and mineral rights without having to bid or compete for the wealth. Blacks were unable to acquire any of this last time giveaway of land wealth. Many were interested, but had their lives threatened by whites and decided not to pursue the free land. So when they went after the wealth, see, this is another thing that you got to understand. 